Good morning, everyone. I want to talk to you a little bit today about a animal that I was thinking about just over the last couple uh, couple days. It was about two weeks ago now that I was out for a walk in the morning, and uh, I turned to the left a little bit and looked down in the ditch, and right right down in the ditch, probably about six feet away from me, was a porcupine. And the porcupine kind of stared at me just a little bit and kind of looked and he, he turned and he, he arched his back just a little bit and you could kind of see the, the quills on the porcupine just kind of start to raise up a little bit in the air. And I thought, don't worry porcupine, I'm not going to come anywhere near you. Um, and it kind of just watched me and, and eventually I just kept on, on walking. But I was thinking about that and I thought to myself, you know what, I have a, a book in my office that talks or, or tells us a little bit about porcupines. And so I, I went to my office and I, I pulled it out and I found out some interesting um, things about porcupines. And, and some of them, uh, some of these facts you, you probably know and, and some of them you, you may not. Um, porcupines will weigh up, up to about 20 pounds. Um, they live obviously in, in the woods and they eat tree uh, tree bark and twigs and, and leaves. Um, they don't hibernate in, in the winter time and even though you, you don't see them a whole lot in the winter, they'll often uh, stay at the tops of trees for two, three weeks at a time and, and just kind of eat, eat away at the tree. Um, and, and when you do see them in the winter, they're, they're a little bit more sluggish than normal. Um, but, but they don't actually hibernate, which was um, a little bit interesting. And uh, the other thing that you may not know about a porcupine is if porcupine quills are so sharp, um, how are porcupines born without hurting the mother? And the truth is when a, a porcupine is born, it has a full set of quills, um, but they're not hard, they're not hardened yet. And, and so within probably three or four minutes of, uh, of the porcupine being born, these quills harden up and, and serve as, as a natural defense against um, predators. So when you think of a, a porcupine, the most obvious thing, the uh, most obvious feature of a porcupine is its quills that it, it has. It's kind of like the distinguishing feature of this, uh, of this animal. And I don't know if you've ever had a, a, a pet that's gotten, uh, you know, porcupine quills stuck in, in them. Uh, I remember we had a dog growing up that one time got whacked with, with porcupine quills. They hurt. And, uh, and, and did you know that a porcupine has over, now get, get a load of this number, over 33,000 quills uh, on its body. I'm not making that up. Over 33,000 quills. Uh, a porcupine has on its its body and, and because of that natural protection uh, a porcupine will not run from predators it will actually kind of stay and, and, and defend itself and so even a, a bear or a coyote or something that is, is much much more sizable than a porcupine uh, as soon as they come near that animal it will flick its tail and, and inflict uh, just some quills in, in their paw and their face, you know, like whatever it is. And so a, a porcupine is, is even well equipped to, to defend um, animals that are, are much more fierce and, and much more sizable um, than, than they would be. And so typically um, porcupines don't run from a fight. Um, they're not like a deer or something that, that tries to escape. They, they stand their ground. And, uh, and and they they fight. Uh, got me thinking a little bit about a passage in the book of Ephesians. And uh, in Ephesians chapter 6, let me just read to you a, a little bit what the uh, Apostle Paul writes in, in Ephesians 6. And uh, he, he begins in, in verse um, 13. He says, Therefore, take up the full armor of God, so that you may be able to resist in the evil day. And having done everything to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith, with 
which you will be able to extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit, and with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. And so Paul, in Ephesians, um, uses a different image. He, he uses the image of a, a soldier which, uh, which is or, or who is well equipped um, to take the, the force of, of the enemy. You think about all those things um, that just serve as kind of the natural defenses uh, for, for a soldier. Um, they, they have a shield to protect them. They have a breastplate to protect their uh, vital organs. They, they have um, a helmet to protect their, their head. And so there's all, all this protection that they have. And, and because of, of that protection that they have, um, Paul re reminds them to stand firm. Paul reminds them to, to stay put. Um, Paul reminds them um, to, to fight. Uh, they, they also have a, a sword, which is, in a way, it can defend, but it but also attacks as, as well. And so when we, we think of, of us as believers, um, we, we are reminded that with, with Christ... Uh, with Christ on our side, with Christ who, who goes with us, we have everything that we need to stand against the power uh, of the evil one, to stand against the power of, of Satan. And, and so often Satan um, tries to sort of tell us that, that we, we don't have the power to resist him. We, we don't have the power to, to fight back. We don't have the power to resist the temptation that he, he puts before us. But, but Paul reminds us that, that through Christ, we, we do. Through Christ, we can be conquerors over the, the traps and temptations that the evil one um, puts, puts before us. Uh, and so my kind of thought for, for you today is, is just as, as you think about the things before you in, in your life, and, and maybe um, sometimes even the discouragement that sets, sets in when, when we, we feel that we failed, or maybe we have failed, and we're like, you know what, I will never get a handle on this. I will never be able to conquer this. I will never um, be able to overcome um, this, this fear, this struggle, this, this intense battle that I, I just go through over and over and over and over. Um, the Lord re reminds us that, that like uh, the, the soldier, we, we are equipped through him um, to be able to withstand the attacks of, of Satan, the attacks of the devil. And, and kind of like that porcupine that, again, has all those natural mechanisms of, of defense so that it can fend off bears and mountain lions and, and all sorts of animals like that, that you would think would be kind of formidable foes for the, the porcupine. They, they don't want to touch it. Um, kind of kind of like it has its own defense mechanism just built right into to who the porcupine is. We too, as Christians, through Christ, have the, the ability to call on his name and to have him come and, uh, and, and conquer and, and fight. And, uh, and he, on our behalf, can subdue, subdue the enemy um, for us. And we can be victors through Christ in whatever it is that we are, are facing, whatever it is that we are being challenged with. May God bless you. Um, the sun is shining today. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. And uh, just trust that uh, as you go throughout your day, that you'll be spending time with the Lord, that you'll be praying, that you'll be singing, that you'll be worshiping Him. May God bless uh, you today.